Welcome to the Fast Fix channel. My name is Jason and today we're changing the front and rear brakes on a 2016 Nissan Murano. Let's get right to work. First thing we need to do is loosen our lug nuts, 21 millimeter. Now that our wheel's off, we can inspect our brake rotor. This one has about 70,000 miles on it. It's looking really good. There's no waviness, no pitting, nothing like that. I can feel some ridges here and there, so I may get it machined, but in all likelihood, I'll probably just leave it. It really just depends, and that's up to the builder. Now, if you are noticing any waviness in your brakes or shuttering, that is um, certainly a sign that you need to get your rotors turned or replaced. So we've got plenty of meat on the bone with these in case we do need to turn them. So we might go ahead and do that just because we you know, want another 70,000 miles out of this brake job. But honestly, we could probably leave these and be just fine. With the back side of the caliper here, we need to take out the pin bolts, the slide pin bolts right here and right here. That's a 17 millimeter. Now that we got the slide bolts out, we can take off the caliper, just like that. And we'll just need to rest it on a place where it won't move, like here. Now we can remove our brake pads. These just pull out, just kind of wiggle them around and they'll come out. Just like that. Do it for the back side too. So here is our used brake pad. As you can see, not much life left on that, but we've got plenty on our new one here. And these are what I'm using, OEM as stated. Here are the part numbers. These are for front, these are rear. I will also list these in the description. And after careful deliberation, decided not to service these rotors. They don't need turned, they definitely don't need to be replaced. And inspecting the old pad, we can see very even wear. There's no waviness in this pad at all. In fact, I checked it with these dial calipers and it's uniform across the whole thing. So we just don't need to replace this rotor or machine it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now, normally in a brake pad kit, you would get uh, these tins, uh, replacement ones. Uh, we did not in, these, in this OEM kit. That doesn't bother me. I don't mind not replacing these. Really, they just need to be cleaned up and they're perfectly fine. Um, I just blew these out a little bit and they're totally good. Uh, so what we will do though, is of course use our uh, brake lube and we'll put those on surfaces that come in contact with the metal. So these tabs right here, we'll put some there, here as well, and then we'll just slide these back in. Nothing too scientific about this. Just kinda get this stuff on. It should be all set. I'll just dab it a little bit here and then we'll just kind of smear it around. Yeah, that's really all you need. Um, should be totally good here. All right, we got our tabs greased up, so we just need to slide this into place. You can kind of see uh, these tins have these little uh, kind of pressure little jogs on them and we just need to slide the tabs uh, through those so this is what we'll do and that's it a little bit harder to see from the back end here but same situation just make sure your tins are clean on the back we'll just slide these in as best we can see Good to go. Since we put on thicker brake pads, our pistons are gonna be a little bit too far extended, so we need to push them back into the cylinder. So what we're gonna do is use an old brake pad, put it on like that, and then we'll take a C-clamp and just gradually drive these back. Now you may have to switch from one side to the other. This is dual pistons, so um, you have to loosen one side and then hop over to the other side 
and push that one back in and just kind of do that a few times. And eventually you'll get there. Um, if you have single piston calipers, this is much easier, but uh, we're living the dual piston life right now. So this is what we're doing. And this should be, should be enough. We don't need a ton of pressure, just enough to drive it back. If you're feeling a lot of resistance, you may have some issues with your caliper. These are looking fine though. You can inspect your boots here. If you don't see any tears or uh, signs of wear any leaking, you're good to go. Just throw them back on. So we got our pistons driven back into the cylinder. So you really just need to put these back on. Should just fit nicely as they do. And now we can put our slide bolts back in. Uh, inspect the threads. If your threads are clean, just like these, you can just toss them back in there. So that's what we're doing. And once you got those bolts cleaned up, Let's drive them in. All right, and that's honestly it. Not much to it uh, when you don't have to service the brake rotor. Everything's good to go. We've got it all tightened according to specs. And all we have to do now is tackle the rears. And do the right thing when you put your lug nuts on. Tighten to their appropriate value. In this case, 88 foot-pounds. All right, we're on the back side now. And much like the fronts, these rotors look really nice. Um, no waviness, no pitting. They're just very smooth and they're likely just fine. So we'll probably just leave these just like the fronts. We'll go ahead and take off our uh, caliper here and get right to changing those brake pads. All right, as you can see, we're on the back side of the caliper here and we're using a 14 millimeter. Break this loose. <sighs> So as you'll discover, this bolt down here, um, you can't get a socket behind it because this uh, arm's in the way here. So what we're gonna do, just use our trusty wrench and our trusty rubber mallet and get after it. Should be set. And when removing this bottom one, as you can see, we can't take it out because we're running into this uh, bar right here. So, um, you know, you could take off the whole caliper. I just don't see why you would do that when really all we need to do is just bend that over and it'll just rest on this bolt here and we'll be able to service these brakes without taking off uh, the entire caliper. All right, so we'll just pull our brake pads out. Pretty simple. And just take a good look at them, inspect them. Uh, these are very thin, uh, definitely needed to be changed. But you can see we have a very even wear across the whole pad. Again, um, that means our rotor is good and flat and we don't need to machine it. Um, it's looking just fine. I'll just pull the back ones off as well. Same story there. Uh, all looks well, extremely thin, but the wear pattern is excellent. Oddly enough, our rear brake pad box contained all of our tins. So we could have used these for the front. We won't bother doing that, but we will replace them for the rears. As far as getting the old ones out, really just get a screwdriver under there and just kind of work them up. They should just come right out. We'll just put these new nice and shiny ones on. <laughs> Just kind of blow out the area wherever those old ones were and we'll just pop these on just like that just like that easy peasy just as before in the fronts we will lube up the tabs on these new ones just any place where the tab comes into contact with metal you're gonna want this grease on it. This metal jog here goes on the top rear. So we'll just slide these in. Just like that. We'll just slide that in. And just like up front, we need to get our piston back into the cylinder. So we're gonna use our C-clamp here and an old brake pad. Just go nice and slow. 
light pressure and just gently work it back. Should be all set. Again, this is a good time to inspect the boot. Everything looks fine, so we don't need to service our caliper in any way. So now we'll just move it back to where it needs to be. And we'll take our pin. And you can re-lube this, of course. It's not a bad idea. I don't have any on me today, so I'm not doing it. You can chew me up in the comments if you'd like. Now, obviously there's not a good way to get a torque wrench on, on this bolt down here. So really, you know, snug it up. I mean, these don't require a whole lot of torque. So if you just make it pretty hand tight and go a little bit beyond that, you're gonna be just fine. So that's pretty good. Yeah, we're, we're set there. Now, after you've got these bolts torqued, you're really done. Um, all you need to do now is put the wheel back on and get those lug nuts tightened appropriately. 80 to 88 foot-pounds is a good rule of thumb. And hey, if this video helped you, please help me and hit like and subscribe. It makes a world of difference. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of the day.